So I find the eyes probably the sexiest part. Hi, I'm Mario Diaz, and this is That's Personal. My favorite toy as a child, um, honestly, I don't have a lot of memories of toys from when I was a kid. Uh, truthfully, we, were, we didn't have a lot of money, so we made do. I just remember what I played with a lot were my crayons and my markers, so creating art was, was how I remember playing when I was a child. I always had a very morbid sense of humor, so I was really good at painting severed hands covered in blood and crying eyes. And uh, yeah, always with the dark sensibility, but I mean, I did have some creepy crawlers and I remember playing with a uh, Rock'em Sock'em. <laughs> I find legs very sexy. I always seem to notice a man's legs. <laughs> that seems to be a thing that I, I find very attractive. Um, but also, other than legs, I would say probably the eyes. I mean, that's where it's all at, right? Just that's where the magic is. When you look into someone's eyes, you can tell a lot. So I find the eyes probably the sexiest part. Um, immediately, my mind goes to like a young George Michaels. I mean, that's who you want to be stuck on a desert island with. He was so hot. But I don't know, it has to be someone with an incredible personality. I think like Elvira, our queen, I adore her. Or perhaps um, Amy Sedaris would be fun to hang out with. Probably the funniest lady alive we could do. She could teach me how to do crafts with the, you know, the palms and the, <laughs> the, laurel, the local fauna. Yeah, so I don't know, some of those gals. No, I like that question. What do I want to be known for after I die? I mean, I hope that after I die, I'm known for someone who spread queer joy. Uh, that's what I long to do in my career. I think my mission in my work as a sex positive queer event producer has always been to help people dissipate the shame that they carry around with their sexuality. So that's why the sex is always front and center in my event productions with a sense of humor, very tongue in cheek. And uh, I just, you know, have always wanted to share this truth that sex is natural, it's good, that you're normal, that uh, it's literally the most innate, natural thing that we carry with us is our sexuality, yet there's so much shame that we carry around with it. It's a, it's, it's a problem with the entire country. The idea that our fear of our sexuality, based in some puritanical way of thinking, this false Christian way of thinking, where we're hiding our children from human bodies, and you know we're so comfortable with violence and hate, but uh, and particularly as a queer child, it's something that we struggle with when all the messages we get our entire life is that that we are somehow bad and quite literally may burn in hell for eternity. So that is my mission to help people feel more comfortable with their sexuality and uh, dissipate the shame. I don't really have a distinct embarrassing moment. I don't get embarrassed very easily. I feel like if you, if you don't live a life that's taking risks and being embarrassed, then you're really not living a life at all. So I look, I mean, maybe if I look back on some of the pictures from when I was a teenager and some of the hairdos and outfits I was wearing, that could be considered a little embarrassing, but I don't know, I think it's kind of great. So not, not full of embarrassment here, shameless. Honestly, I cry all the time, I'm very sensitive. I think I'm just a big baby at heart, a softy, you know? I think being empathetic and compassionate uh, is a good thing. It means I'm living my life to its fullest. Uh, I just did a reading yesterday, a little table read of a script, and I found myself choking up half the time. I think I was the only one at the table, so yeah, I'll cry at the drop of a hat. Who is my hero? There's so many. Um, if I have to choose one, I'm going to choose John Waters. I think about, uh, from the earliest memories of discovering John Waters films, 
I just remember feeling so connected to it. I had a visceral response to his work, his comedy, to the entire Dreamland cast, Divine and everyone else. Just real, just thinking how hilarious and fearless these people were. And it gave me permission to, to feel and think what I was funny was funny. He just sort of gave a real to the establishment. And uh, so yeah, he's one of my great heroes, Mr. John Waters, King of Filth. I'm afraid of pain, of, of being ill, of, I'm afraid of death. I think, I think we all are, if you are someone who loves life, and that's just it, I, I love life. I'm in awe and flabbergasted and godsmacked by the brilliance that is this world and this life. I look at the trees and the stars, and I feel so grateful to be here. So, you know, it's not uncommon, but I would say death. I have had no shortage of love in my life, whether it's my chosen family or my relationships with men. I've had many beautiful, sweet men that I have loved over the years, uh, but also a great heartbreak that comes with it. But I think we are all somehow longing for heartbreak. That means we're living our lives. Um, I still distinctly remember having my heart broken when I was you know, 16 years old by my first love, TJ. That feeling is a memory that will stick with me forever. So I've kind of been running away from love quite a bit just to protect my heart like many of us do. But uh, yes, I've loved. Thanks for watching. Now please like and subscribe to the OutTV YouTube channel.